Hello everyone and once again thank you for tuning in. In today's video I would just like to cover two topics real quick. Um, one is just implementing poppable circuit breakers in your uh, homemade flight sim and the second is just a quick review of the circuit breaker panel by PCFlights.com and if you haven't I definitely recommend checking out their website. Um, they make excellent panels for your uh, cockpit so I would definitely recommend uh, checking out their website and see what you think. Okay, so as uh, usual, we have um, DCS World Flight Sim is already um, loaded. Um, DCS BIOS is uh, up and running. And we have an Adreno uh, Nano that's already plugged into our host computer. So for this particular um, method i would like to look at two methods now this first method i definitely would not recommend it's actually using real circuit breakers um, and driving enough current through the breaker to pop it and um, to implement this method you would connect one side of the breaker to ground the other side goes to your arduino then you would just uh, use a relay and with the digital output, that relay contact would close um, and send five volts to the other side of your breaker. And that would have the computer simulator um, automatically pop your breaker. So we'll um, go over this uh, method. Um, say, for example, the DI portion of it is on this particular panel, I have uh, three one amp breakers and I have several real five amp breakers but only the three one amp breakers are um, connected in this method and then I also have um, another type of breaker in addition to those but we'll go over that in a second okay so for this particular one here if I cycle the circuit breaker um, the DI portion works as a switch. So as you press your, your breaker, you can see the simulator responding. And you can see that the signal is being sent out as well to um, um, auto pop the, uh, the breaker with the relay. Okay, so let's go over that portion of the circuit. Let's go over this relay part. Now, to implement that, I'm going to uh, take this wire that's going to the relay and I'm going to rehook it back to the Adreno and I'll go over why I'm doing that in a shortly. So I put that wire um, back. So what we have here is a uh, 5 volts coming from a power supply. So that is driving this um, this circuit. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, reset that breaker so that all of them are in. Uh, let me do that with the sim here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, have the sim pop the breaker. So I will um, give the signal by using the mouse and extending the breaker. And I'm gonna just hit our timer see how long this takes so the relay is on and we're just waiting for the breaker to pop and there it goes so that was about um, that was probably about 15 seconds I think and um, and as we can see the left engine start breaker pop so let's reset it and let's do the next one. So in this one case, uh, let's pop this guy here. So we'll go to the sim. Um, manually, uh, with the mouse, we'll extend the breaker. And let's start our timer. And it usually takes uh, maybe between 10 to 20 seconds. To, uh, activate okay so that was about 15 seconds I think oh, probably less than 15 seconds so that was um, 
um, engine igniter one. Now let's pop engine igniter two. Uh, we'll just reset our timer. Go to the sim here and extend the breaker and start our timer. And as this goes, okay, that one's about 10 seconds, I think. Uh, well, you know, thereabouts. So this particular method, we're using a, a, a relay to um, drive enough um, current to pop a real circuit breaker. Now, ideally, I uh, would have preferred a half amp rating breaker, but I couldn't locate one, so the next best thing was a one amp breaker. But the reasons why I definitely would not recommend it is even at one amp, it takes a lot of current to finally trip that breaker. And as an example, this has only been running for, um, oh, maybe a couple of, about an hour or so tinkering with the circuit. But I can see that the current started to already melt the uh, breadboard. See if you can notice that. And if I look at my wires, I can see that the wire is actually starting to burn as well. The purple, this purple wire, right? This purple wire right here is actually starting to burn as well as the, um, as well as this breadboard melting. So due to those excess of currents, you know, that can actually start a fire even though I'm only trying to trip a one amp breaker. Second thing I think is what's happening is a lot of power supplies are like smart power supplies. They will actually see a short and they'll go into short circuit protection and they'll limit their current. So this power supply may actually be doing that, cutting back the current when um, this guy shorts out because that power supply can output more than five amps but yet it's taken quite a while for that breaker to pop, pop, you know, in a range of 10 to 15 seconds. So if that's a one amp breaker, five amps should have tripped him a lot quicker. So I'm suspecting that um, that power supply have short circuit protection and it's limiting the current. So I just wanted to go over that particular method. Um, and as you can see, definitely would not recommend it because it takes too much current to try to trip a real breaker. If you have real circuit breakers you're using, I would recommend only connecting the DI part and just manually um, push and pull your breaker and just use it that way. Don't try to use the SIM to pop it because that's um, definitely not safe, too much current. And now back to the reasons of um, why I disconnected that wire. Um, ideally, if this relay is off, this contact is open, so this line should not affect the circuit. But when the relay is connected, this module has something internally in its uh, circuit board here that is affecting the Adreno because with that wire connected, um, I could try to toggle the breaker and as you can see, the SIM doesn't see it. It doesn't respond as I press the breaker. But if I remove that relay and it's this wire here, I take him out, all right? I can go back to that same breaker and you can see that um, the Adreno now sees it as a pop, uh, you know, a moving switch. So that tells me that this is just not um, an open contact. There's something else going on with this relay module, but that's just a, an anomaly I noticed. Okay, so the preferred method of um, implementing poppable circuit breakers would be to use um, a simulated circuit breaker. Um, now one cir such circuit breaker, um, uh, Clickson, I think they got bought out by Senseda Technologies, if I'm pronouncing their name correctly. 
but they're part number 3S Bravo 4-1-N. Uh, it's actually, uh, they're using a, a, a normal relay coil. So this only pulls milliamps. So there's no danger of overcurrent with these guys. But the thing is the relay needs 28 volts and the Arduino can't drive that directly. So this circuit is the same one that we've used to drive the magnetically held switch. So if you have that, a transistor, you can use that to drive your poppable circuit breaker that's a, you know, a simulated circuit breaker. So we'll take a look at that method. Um, I'm, not going, I'm not going to use a transistor. I've, I've done that before in previous videos. So in this one, I'm going to just take my power supply and put a voltage straight to, the, uh, to this coil. So I'm going to disconnect this 5 volt supply. Okay. And I'll grab over here. I'll grab a I'll grab a um, now normally um, 28 volts is what's needed, but this one here is a 24 volt supply, and uh, it'll take a few seconds longer for it to pop, but it'll still work. So this is what this looks like on the other side. Uh, I can balance this. Okay, so these guys are your um, simulated circuit breakers. The green ones are real circuit breakers. So for the simulated circuit breaker, um, these um, Phillip head screws are actually your coil, your relay coil. And these tabs here are actually your switch contacts when you go to wire this guy. So let's just uh, demonstrate this real quick. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, what we'll do is um, I'm going to connect the power supply to one side there and the hot wire of the power supply let's just uh, see if we can get a good angle here we'll just I don't know if I can see correctly I'm gonna just touch this down and that one popped and I'm gonna go to the one on the bottom Uh, it's moving on me. Let's see if I can balance this. Okay, so um, I think you kind of see the um, the difference. If you have 28 volts, these guys are pop no longer than three seconds. Um, but typically, it's a lot quicker. A lot of times, it can be milliseconds um, when you give the command. It'll actually pop. And uh, I'll just demonstrate this one last time. Um, the ones in the back corner, I hook up the power supply. That one popped. And this one on the bottom. Okay, so um, this particular circuit breaker, um, one particular source, could be from say Peerless um, Electronics. Now they're brand new, they're a little bit pricey, um, coming in at 125 each, um, but that's the part number. And uh, a lot of times you might can find some used or find a deal on eBay where you can get these at a much cheaper cost. And um, again, this is just one example. I think there's other simulated breakers out there. Um, I remember Han Solo from the um, Eagle Dynamics Forum, he located a company, a different one that made poppable simulated circuit breakers. So um, if you get your hands on one, that is the preferable method of um, you know popping breakers for your flight sim. Okay. So, 
Um, just want to go over um, that topic. Now the second topic is the actual circuit breaker panel um, from PCFlights.com. Um, uh, now I probably have a, a, a few recommendations. Um, like I say, the, uh, excellent quality. Um, the backlighting is awesome. Um, like for example, I got a, a light here. By put it behind the light, you can kind of see the text glowing a little bit. Um, so um, that's the backlighting feature. Now, when you order your panel, what you will get is your faceplate. Um, you will get um, a set of uh, screws a bag of screws and um, you also um, have um, mock-up um, circuit breaker um, heads um, like for example uh, these guys so that is what the screws are used for it's a uh, tighten those in place. Now like for example, the ones at the bottom, I don't have a hardware holding them in place at the moment and that's just uh, so I can demonstrate the reason why you need it. Um, if you just screw the face plate on top of your back plate panel, the breaker would just spin because it's nothing really um, securing it to stop it from moving. Um, and it would just spin freely. So that's why you need um, the screw hardware. Now the panel that comes with your circuit breaker panel is actually um, this guy here. And the holes are um, um, fairly small, but they are the right size for this screw pan head. So, um, the screw uh, head is on the opposite side and this acts like a nut so to speak. These are actually threaded so that as you tighten your screw the compression pulls this guy down tight. So then when that happens he doesn't move. But one recommendation I would make is the whole size is only good for the fake circuit breakers. Um, but I'm using real circuit breakers. So what I tried to do was use my drill to widen the hole. But as soon as the drill hit this material, it's kinda reminds me of a, it's not glass, but it's a um, particular material that you can't put a drill to, to widen the holes. It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll crack. So my recommendation would be is make this panel such that the holes are large so you can mount real circuit breakers and just use uh, washers, uh, maybe nylon washers. What I've done, I've just printed out, um, I got on a 3D printer and just printed out some. So, and I'll show how that looks. So as you can see on the top here, once you tighten your screw, uh, once you tighten the screws, the compression stops this guy from moving. So he's firmly tightened down. So that's one recommendation because this panel, the holes were too small. I had to 3D print my own back plate and uh, basically what I did was just use um, some translucent filament and uh, I just took um, some dimensions of this plate here and printed out a panel and I made uh, my holes large enough so that the um, circuit breakers could mount. So in cases where I don't have a circuit breaker I would just use this to um, mount the uh, these guys. So that's just one recommendation is to um, 
That way you don't have, if a customer wants to mount real breakers, you can just have one part number for your plate. Uh, this guy with larger holes and just supply some nylon washers or something. And uh, then that would cover everybody. You could use your mock-up breakers or you could use real breakers. So that's one recommendation I would make. Uh, the second recommendation would be on the tax nomenclature. Um, this one here, aileron uh, disc, it should actually say um, aileron tab. And you can see from the, uh, the game nomenclature here, uh, I can point that out, uh, this guy here. Um, so that's just, for future reference and I guess for future reference for you guys as well if you order this panel um, just be aware that um, these holes are too small to mount real circuit breakers um, other than that um, it was uh, I definitely would recommend it uh, excellent quality um, the lead time wasn't uh, that long. I think they turned it around in a little over a week. And, uh, and I've been, been happy with it. So I've, I've ordered a lot of other panels from PCFlights.com and I'll do more videos. I'm actually gonna be replacing my homemade panels with the panels from PCFlights.com. So I might cover those along with other, other topics as well. And um, so I definitely would recommend it and was just want to do a quick review of that panel. Uh, once again, thank you for watching and uh, good luck with your cockpits.